we come back to praise God, we're going to follow the program and pray. Let us all stand. The call of worship. We give you thanks within this holy sanctuary. We sang as a people who have enjoyed Jesus in our lives. So let us celebrate the liberation we have in God's divine spirit. Let us remain standing. All have the power of Jesus' name. We're going to sing that all together.
Father, we ask, Father, one great thing, and that is that, Father, in this season, Father, whatever you're doing, uh, don't do it without us. We need you every day. Whatever you do, you got for us, Father, from here on out, Father, please don't do it without us. For we need you every day and every hour. Lord, this, this is our short prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Bishop Davis. If you've been here the whole week, let me see your hand. If you've been here the whole week, and you see God move in a mighty way, let me see your hand. If you show up and have a good time, let me see your hand. Tell somebody, say, my child, if you have a good time, some more is on this way. It's just a matter of time. Tell somebody, get the right place at the right time. Because some more blessings are on this way.
Temple 
that the people you have to love him, respect him, and follow his leadership. He is a counselor. He is professional counselor and a powerful man of God as a preacher. The office itself, as he did at this past general conference, as a candidate for Episcopal service. But today he's being invited to do what I think he is eminently qualified to do. I have a message for us. We're going back to do what God has called us to do. A message that says, hold on. Yes, sir. Help is on the way. Yes, I am so pleased to be able to present Linda's husband. <laughs> Philip Temple, senior pastor. The brother in Christ, Reverend Gregory Vaughn Eason Sr. Reach out towards him. Stretch your hands towards him. I mean, showing up stretch because the words don't stretch us. Just declare with me we need a word. We need a word from heaven. From heaven. Preach, preach.
in the marvelous, majestic name of Jesus, the sweetest name I know. And we give honor to Bishop James LaVert Davis, the wonderful bishop of the Second Episcopal District. Can we give God praise for him? I thank God for Bishop Davis. We have followed his leadership over the years. Also a graduate of Boyce Brown and Turner Seminary, and a great pastor in the Ninth Episcopal District, and well respected as a pastor in the Sixth Episcopal District, Georgia area. We thank God for his leadership and what God continues to do. So I count it a privilege and a signal honor to stand in this place where Bishop James LaVert Davis is Bishop. Come on and give God praise for Bishop Davis. I also want to thank God to Mother Aurelis Beavers Davis in her absence. I had the wonderful privilege to be her pastor. There's no more wonderful person than Supervisor Davis. Come on and give God praise for her. To the general conventional officers who may be here, to the distinguished presiding elders, presiding elder Hayward and Morris, can we give God praise for them? And the host coordinator, Reverend Billy Ray Hunter, come on and give God praise for Reverend Hunter. And I want to personally thank the Reverend Dr. Herbert Gibbs, and we give God praise for his wonderful hospitality. And also Reverend Christian Savage and his hospitality. And to the wonderful pastors, women in ministry, women's missionary society, YP Beers, Sons of Alan Wade, Rayak, M. Swabo, and also the wonderful friends of the 157th session of the Virginia Annual Conference. Let me also thank Sister Janet Benjamin. Let's give God praise for her once again. Uh, I was also privileged to serve as her pastor. And we also thank God for Reverend David Richards, Sister Linda Richards, and David the Fourth. And we give God praise for them. There's a lady here today who is still the apple of my eye after 36 years and sits on the throne of my heart. Sister Linda Tyson Easton, I thank God for her and her presence. And beloved, I bring you greetings from our outstanding bishop, Bishop Reginald Thomas Jackson, who's doing a tremendous work in the 6th Episcopal District, helped us regain accreditation at Morris Brown College and doing a tremendous job as chair of Turner Seminary. Go ahead and give God praise for my bishop, Bishop Reginald Thomas Jackson. I recognize, beloved, that I am in the unenviable place because I stand between you and the appointments. Say amen, somebody. And I have sat where you sat, and I do know that you are waiting for a word, but you want it quick and in order. Somebody shout amen. So turn with me if you have your smartphones or your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28. Verses 16 through 20, if you have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. If you have your smartphones, please join me. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw the Lord, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. 
takes even to the end of the age. Shall we pray? Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Lord, let your Holy Ghost come on down. We dare say, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Consecrate us to your service by the power of grace divine. Let our souls look up with a steadfast hope and our wills be lost in thine. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Look at somebody and say, We are a real church. We real and we still dare to believe. to believe. Look on the other side and say, We are the real church and we dare to believe. Beloved, now through the Christian centuries, great theologians and pastors and lay leaders have tried to define what the real church is all about. John Calvin said the real church is the pillow and ground of the truth. There were others who say that the real church is the place where the pure gospel is treated, is preached rather, and the sacraments are duly administered. The Apostle Paul said the real church is none other than the body of Christ, where Christ is the head. Biblical theologians have described the church as the ecclesia, the called out community. I love the word colonia for the church because indeed it is the fellowship of believers. Beloved, in 38 years as a pastor in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, I believe in the church universal. I believe still in the denominational church. And I believe in the power and the anointing that occurs in the local church. I believe in the black church, the church of Allen. It was the church where schools were founded like Morris Brown, Edward Waters, Wilberforce, Turner Seminary, and Payne Seminary. It was the church that led the way to freedom and equality and equity and justice for our people. It was the church and is the church that still stands as the best hope for African American people in our nation. But I would be less than honest not to say that we stand in a time where the church is really challenged. The average age of AMEs is 67, but the average age of the African American community is 31. We have a challenge. We are standing in the crucible of a time when God is calling us to be more transparent. God is calling us to be more ethical. God is calling us to be the real church. The real church that young boys can look up to. The real church where young girls can look up to. The real church that our community can embrace. Is there anybody here ready for the real church? Anybody here ready for the church of God? Anybody here ready?
is guilty with no remembrance. I'm not concerned about where the historic black church will be tomorrow or next year, but what really concerns me is where will we be five years, ten years, twenty years, and fifty years down the road. It is time for us to lay the foundation right now to be the real church that God is calling us to be. Well, in our text, we find that this is Jesus' post-resurrection message to the church. Notice now that he's already been crucified. He was buried in the tomb. You know the story. Rose from the dead, appeared to the disciples, and now he leaves them his final will and testament. And this message is not just for the eleven disciples of old, but it's for me and you. It's for us to embrace the real church. And notice now that Jesus left the message here in his commissioning statement. And this message is not for the fake church. It is not for those who are playing church. It is not for
got authority. Somebody say, make it plain, preacher. If you and I carry the elder in the church somewhere, some bishop laid their hand on your head and said, take the authority to preach the word and administer the sacraments in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I right about it? We got authority. Stop that contender. You got authority. Stand up. You got authority. Tell the devil to get behind you.
Christian education is really the one ministry that undergirds and supports all other ministries of the church. You know, when folks get saved, we expect them to be cleaned up. Any Christian would know that if you cast fish, they have to be what? Teaching ministry. Teaching ministry. If you want a disciple, a disciple has to be taught. Embrace the mandate. Go. Make disciples. Baptize them. And teach them. And you know, a part of embracing the mandate is having radical hospitality. I don't know if I'm going to be open to all God's children. It says go to all nations. And we don't have a right to define who can come into God's house. Yes, yeah. 